So, you can see on the board, and some of you, uh, this two alarm bells for you, right? You can see on the board, I'm going to show you two different ways to work out this correlation coefficient. One of them is with a, without a calculator, and that's why I've handed you this piece of paper, okay? Um, to do this, you need to know the formula for this, which you'll find in the exercise book, um, and you have to do it by hand. It's quite a laborious process. Now, very deliberately, the syllabus actually doesn't say you need to know the formula and be able to do it by hand. What they do say is you need to be able to use technology. I'll show you how to do it with a, with a spreadsheet, with a calculator. That's what they say you have to be able to do. Just before I come to your question, the danger of course is if all you know is how to crunch numbers and put them into a black box and out, you know, arises some number, if you don't understand where that came from, then you're kind of not really being a mathematician, you're just being a machine. So we're not going to do this very often. In fact, we're probably only going to do this once. But it's so that when you go to your calculator, you know what on earth it's doing. Were you going to ask a question before? I was going to ask if I can borrow a calculator. Ah, I've actually pinched one of yours, Mrs. Lee, so hopefully there's another spare. Okay, good. So you will need your calculator for this next part. We're going to do it manually first, crunch the numbers, uh, and then I'm going to show you how to actually get your calculator to do it all automatically for you. Okay. Now, um, you can see, I'm just going to find the right spot. If you go to the end, go past exercise two, flick forward a few pages, and you'll come to a page that looks like this. I have to describe it like that because I have no page numbers. <laughs> Sorry, I keep on, yeah, anyway. So you'll see up the top it says a formula for Pearson's coefficient. That's what I'm about to show you. Now this is really important. This formula here, I want us to write it down. You can see that R there that I referred to before. So it says R equals, and then there's this monstrous thing that we're going to unpack together, okay? So it's a fraction, the starters. What's on the numerator? Well, you recognize this Greek symbol, I hope. What's the name of this Greek symbol? Sigma. Sigma, and what does it refer to? What does it do, Max? The sum. Uh, say it again. Sum. It's the sum of a bunch of different things, uh, S for sum, okay? Um, then you'll see, and we'll write this down together, some things in brackets here, okay? It says X minus X bar times y minus y bar. That's the way we say it. Um, this is stretching a little bit, but does anyone remember, or has anyone seen this notation before, x bar? You might have seen it in other subjects, actually. Moe, what have you seen? It's the mean of x and the mean of y. Okay, if that's something you've not encountered before, maybe you want to just jot that down for yourself, because it is actually fairly common notation. to use the full name that we learnt uh, a few weeks back, is the arithmetic mean, so just the average, you know what that's about. That's the numerator, okay, and then you've got the denominator, which is even grosser, so there's a gigantic square root sign, okay, and then underneath the square root, there's a couple more of these sigmas. It's x minus x bar squared, and then another sigma y minus y bar squared. My goodness, what is this mess? Okay. Let's think about what this means. X and Y, these are scores, right? It's like, oh, how many, uh, how many police were on duty? How many instances of crime did we report, okay? What we're doing here, when we go and say, take away X, sorry, the other way around, take X and then subtract X bar. What we're doing is we're working out the difference between that particular instance, that particular night in the precinct, and we're comparing it to the average, right? Is this more than we get on average? Is it less than we get on average? And we do the same for number of police, okay? So what you're getting here is a bunch of differences. Now I hope this rings a bell when you think back to standard deviation and variance. This is the idea. It's like how far are you away from an average night, from an average person, okay? What's the distance? What you've got down here will come to that as we start to calculate it. So here, is a data set, okay? Now, I've deliberately picked a relatively small quantity of numbers, um, and I've tried to keep the numbers nice and easy. We'll even get some whole numbers out of this, so that the calculation is not what you're focused on. It's so that you can actually think about what it's doing, okay? So for starters, to work out our numerator, our x take away x bar, y take away y bar, you can see each x and each y has its own one. I need to know what x bar and y bar, I need to know what those averages are. So go ahead, I've given you five scores. So for each one, maybe with the person next to you, you need to add up your x scores and divide by 
how many scores there are, which in this case is five. Then you need to add up your Y scores and then divide them also by five. So when someone gets X bar, can they nine. share it with us? Did we get nine? Excellent. And uh, Y bar is in the 20s, right? 22. 22, thank you. Okay, now that we've got X bar and Y bar, we can really quickly, it's just some simple number crunching, we can work out each of these differences. I'll give you the first one for free. X minus X bar on the first row is six. Let me highlight it for you. Six, there's X, take away nine. There's X bar. So six take away nine, what's that? Negative three, thank you very much, okay? Um, and then we're gonna keep on just going down the line, right? Seven take away nine, that's the new X take away X bar. That's gonna be negative two. two. Seven take away nine. Uh, nine take away nine? Zero. Zero. And you can keep on going. Now I get positives, 10 take, oh, sorry. Uh, 10 take away nine, and then 13 take away nine, okay? So there are my X minus X bar values. Uh, and you can do the same for the y bar values, y minus y bar. First one's 15 take away 22, which is negative seven, and then you can carry on from there. Sir? Yeah? So see where your y bar is on the right of that, is that where it goes? Uh, you're talking about here? Yeah. Ah, now you'll see in a second why I'm actually not uh, it's, you can see I've got all these grey ones where we're going to put some totals, and I'm not going to put totals there, and I'll show you why in a second. Let's just get the numbers first, okay? Good question, though. Do your numbers check out? Does that look okay to you? Happy? I just did them in my head. All right, now, have a look back to our formula for the Pearson correlation coefficient. On the numerator it says, I want you to add up a bunch of things. What things does it want us to add? Look closely. Add. Yeah, we're adding a bunch of things. What things are we adding? The sum of the value of x minus x power and the value of y minus y power. I'll admit the notation isn't the clearest. But you can see we just worked out a whole column of x take away x bars and a whole column of y take away y bars. What's the operation kind of hiding in here that we don't write? Multiplication. It's multiplication, right? So it says take that product, take that product, you'll get a product here and a product here and a product here. And then once you've got all those products, what are you going to do with all of them? Solid. You're going to add those up. Okay, does that make sense? So individually, I'm, I don't really care about what these add up to. That's why I've left this blank. Individually, I don't care what the y minus y bars are. I care about what happens when I multiply them together. Okay, so go ahead. Negative 3, ne take away, or multiply by negative 7, I should say. Come on, we can just do this out loud, right? Negative 3 times negative 7, 21, thank you. Negative 2 times negative 3, 6. 0 times 1, 0. 1 times 4. And then the last one is? Okay, excellent. So now I've got these five values. These are the things that I'm adding up. 21, 6, 4, and 20. That looks to me, using my friends of 10, like 51. 51? Happy? Okay, excellent. So just before we go any further, what have we just worked out? We just worked out this thing, this whole numerator. In our case here, in our example, it's 51. That's just what we got, okay? But then we move on to the denominator, which is a bit of a mess. Thankfully, we've actually done most of the work, okay? You can see we're going to take the square root of these things all added up together. This is the x take away x bar is squared. And then these things all added up together. So that's why you can see down the bottom here, we're going to get each of our independent values. Can I just hit pause and let you guys work out? What is each of this, these values? Here's x take away x bar. So square it and you'll get a new number. Square it, you'll get a new number, and so on. Okay, that'll fill in this second last column. And then you're going to square all these guys, that'll give you the last column. Can I give you a second to work those out? Yeah.